I had a moment where I was like, I'm watching, we can watch everything happen now. Mm-hmm. We can watch everything happen now. And I just think about how this, um, this faux connection, you know, um, and the, the seeming, the seeming kind of omniscience and connection mm-hmm. that the internet gives us, how it's like the mm-hmm. anti-spirit, you know what I mean? So if you almost see, you know what I'm saying? You almost see it as like, it gives a false sense of like how the spirit works and the connection mm. to the spirit. Welcome to Royal Path. And tonight I'm here to, I'm your host, Andrew. Tonight I'm here to ask Father Turbo and Cyprian, is Funk dead? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, are you really, is that really the no that's not really the question, but uh, I'm just going to roll with that. But I have no idea because I have no insight into that. Really, what I'm actually going to ask is, and this just hit me like five minutes ago. So maybe it's not a real question, okay. but is there a small little talent? What's like a small little talent that you guys have? Like, like um, something that is not like you can't like do like four, you know, like crosswords at the same time or something like that, but something like small, like for an example, the one I thought of is okay. I am excellent at, I don't know why, but I'm really good at being like, that should okay i gotta so it's like a drive i'd be like okay i'm leaving my house i gotta stop by the store i gotta stop by the gas station then i gotta go to church and then i'll be at costco that should put me right at there at like 10 35 and i just get that every time i'm like oh yeah da, 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 da. this will take this or this will take this Estimate, okay estimating travel distances well not just that but it, it's a thing that like my friend my buddy nathan and i catechumen nathan and i've talked about it's something about being a cook too because like i always oh. walk up to the oh, okay. okay i can be sitting there and be like oh it's time to check on that thing and i'll get up and i'll be like three two one and then the like alarm will go off it's just like this like excellent internal like timing you have a great thing. internal clock yeah maybe and that's you're a drummer I'm... i mean you're a drummer oh there's there you go. that so that yeah that'll that'll train it that'll yeah. definitely train the internal clock now that i've said this there will be some instance in the next couple of weeks where that would be proven wrong you know i'll show up like wicked late to something so on that on that note, I have a very good um, I guess what they would call like ori I'm a very good orienteer, I think they would call that. Like if I pass through someplace one time, I'm good to like if you drop me off far away, far away from there. And whether it's city, whether it's woods, whatever, something about like being able to remember, and I'm not even conscious of it, like paying attention, but being able to remember like it's hard it's hard it's it's just a sense right like whether it's landmarks or oh this and go in this direction like when i was in college they the the the, their nickname nickname among my friends because i went to school in dc and so you know it's easy to get lost there and we'd be on the other side of town walking back and uh, and the nickname was eagle they'd call me eagle eye because no matter what kind of substances we were jacked up on, they'd be like, how are you navigating us home right now? And I would always get, get them there. And they'd be like, Eagle Eye is back. And I don't wow. even know how. It's just one time. And DC is a hard city because it's purposely organized to get you lost. It's really? Organized. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was, it was designed by Pierre L'Enfant to be very difficult to take an army. There's no straight. You can't get straight to the capital. So from the outside, you can't get straight. It like goes and then it'll have these roundabouts and come out, take you on the, the, the rotaries and take you out. So it's built in a bunch of those. So it's very hard to navigate an army. In. It's built that way. But yeah, I think, I think that's good. Orienteering for me. For My sure. dad was the same way. way when he went back to like his childhood home, he had not been to in like 30 years or something like that. My mom had told me a story and he knew exactly where to go and like 
how to get there and stuff like that. So Dang. just kind of a feeling. So same. What about you, Father? Uh, I was debating which one to pick. So I guess, like, you know, I'm surpri- I'm a surprisingly good swimmer. Oh, there you go. <laughs> People wouldn't go. expect that, but yeah. Why? Because you're black. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm not shocked. Bucks, I'm not shocked. Bucks the stereotype. Yeah. Bucks the stereotype. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, I'm a, I mean, I'm a big guy, whatever. But um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm a pretty good swimmer. Well, Swimming is good. one of those things that if you enjoy doing it, I think it's, I think people are good if they enjoy it. Because it seems like people who aren't good, they just don't get in the water. Yeah. Like I, you know, if anyone ever asked me, or like my wife's ever like, what do you want to do? It's like, I just want to go someplace where I can swim. Yep. Yep. So, yep. I noticed that about my, so the difference between my two daughters, like my, my older, she, she's a good swimmer now, but it took like, we had to get her in the pool a lot. Mm-hmm. So it's like, she was luckily, like when she was coming up, we were always around pools. And then when we were in New Hampshire, it was like the lakes and everything. So we would get her in there, get her real comfortable, but she would always be like scared and she wanted the floaties and stuff. And it took her a long time to become a good swimmer. My younger one, she's like fearless. And she was like, she would just be like, I want to go in the pool. And she, from the jump, she never used floaties. Mm. She never used anything. She just was like, no, I'm swimming. You go stand over there. And she started underwater, dude. Wow. Like just yeah. boom, boom. And she was always good. And I was like, what is, and she's yeah. a fantastic swimmer. And yeah. she's three and she yeah. taught herself to swim, but it's just because she, she's constantly like, we have a pool. So she's constantly like, I want to go swimming right now. You have a Can pool? we go swimming right now? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. It just it seems like the ocean's just like you could lean out your front door and spit and hit the ocean. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, like, both. I, both. It, it is. It is both. <laughs> like, uh, I'm looking at my pool right now and I'm looking at the ocean. If I <laughs> go up one one degree, there's the ocean. <laughs> I just don't feel like dealing with the ocean today. I'm just gonna go to my pool. But, um, Father, do you, is there like do you have a preference like like creek swimming versus like like oh. pool swimming versus ocean swimming? Um. I'm from Missouri. I prefer creek swimming. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I grew up. You know, I mean, I love pools, uh, and I think I prefer like lakes over over ocean. But like, I mean, really, I just I love the ocean. I love, you know, I don't. It's weird because I don't really like the beach. I love the ocean. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Especially as a Californian, that makes sense to me. Yeah, like I just, if, I was, if I'm ever to go, I just go straight to the water and then, mm-hmm. you know, do what I need and get, like, I'm, a, I'm not a beach guy. I'm, I'm an ocean guy, like swimming, but yeah. Yeah. Lakes are dope. Have you been to the Ozarks, Father? I know you went down south, but did you mm-hmm. go to the Ozarks? Ozarks yeah. are, Lake of the Ozarks are dope. One of the best weekends of my entire life. Uh, I, I, during when I was doing it, when I was like 13, it's when I bought my first album to my first CD by myself, Nirvana's In Utero. I went and bought that and I bought that in Lake of the Ozarks. And the whole time I was there, I was like this, I'm going to remember this because like th- it was just a blast. The enti- We were just on boats, on like restaurants, on the lake, like just like swimming the entire time. I was just like, this is one of the best weekends of my entire life. And it was. It stuck through, you know. Here I am, like twenty People years like later. Boat, boat around to various different bars and stuff in the Ozarks, right? Isn't that what they do? They travel between the destinations yeah. on boats. That's yeah. Sick. It's it's a lot of fun. I really like the Ozarks quite a bit. So That's cool. It's in my blood. Um. So, okay, Cyprian, you felt you you were. It seemed like you had a specific topic you wanted to talk about tonight. So I'm mm-hmm. gonna, I'm gonna turn it over just a little bit to you. A little well, bit. Yeah, we were kind of father and I were kind of talking, uh, I guess, a little bit the precursor of this before before we started, before you jumped on. But I've been feeling like. And it's something that certainly father, it's something that you've said, but it's becoming clear to me m- more and more every day, very much more clear. You know, you've been saying for a long time that, you know, since we met, really, and I'm sure that you were saying it before that, that like, well, this is a warm up, the stuff that happened in 2020 and all of that, that it's like, 
this is a warm up. And I think a lot of people were like, no, this is the crisis. You know, this yeah. is it. And you've been like, no, this is this is the so now I've taken to calling it the tutorial level, mm. you know, like in a video game where it's like mm -hmm. the little level where you run and you can't yeah. really die, but it's yeah. like you, you jump and then you, it teaches you, you how to do the same. various things, you know, that you're at double jump and the, or whatever. I've been like, oh, that was the that was the tutorial level for what's for what's clearly on the horizon. Mm -hmm. And so I was hoping that we could talk about like, okay, if that's the case, well what are the skills maybe we could explore like well what are the, what are the skills or the lessons where did we where did we screw up what are the examples of things that we saw over the last three years that are important that we should be paying attention to as the skills and the tools that we're going to need as we move forward yeah that's great i just if i could uh, I would like to make a strong suggestion to the audience if, if it's possible to, you know, just kind of break that, that wall. Um, Cyprian just did an interview or there's an interview done with Cyprian on the Mark Claire show. And it would be worth it, I think, um, for people to maybe even stop listening now and then mm. listen to his interview on the Mark Claire show talking about you know, the reality of the impact of AI. Um, and the reason why I want to, I, I'm, I'm strongly suggesting that to everyone is because I would like to almost um, take our conversation now, mm. but just fully, fully aware of that in light. So it'd almost be like a compliment or a continuation because basically what Cyprian lays out like very incredibly accurately there is the reality of what and how AI is and how it's really affecting us. Um, and he lays it out in a way that kind of gets into the players. Um, and I don't know, maybe even just kind of, you know, if you even give like a little five minute synopsis, that's great just for some context because some people may not do that. But I just think there's a lot to carry on from there because it's a good primer, but I feel like tonight we could go like, that next kind of like level down with what you were saying too. Cause it was, I, I just thought it was really important personally. I, I think the, um, so, so yeah, I could give like a little um, like foundational. I mean, I think that the important idea and, and it's, we don't need to go deep even I don't think into the AI necessarily mm -hmm. for this because it's the Royal path. And so like mm -hmm. our listeners are already there, but it's like, I guess the thing that I was trying to get to which, which would be remedial, I think, for, for people who have been checking out this show, is like what we're being confronted with. So like what we were confronted with in over the last three years was a kind of a coercion to say yeah. no to the things we didn't want. Whereas what's coming is a seduction and we have to say no to the things that we do that look like what we do want like yeah, the, but, the temptation is there but i want to make this clear because i try to stress this that doesn't mean the coercion's dropped off right right fair which enough, is super fair key enough. which is super key because the coercion part is there still you know so so now it's it's so yes so it's not an instead of it's an and it's yes. in addition to so it's like mm -hmm. the pull off this side of the path okay mm -hmm. now here comes the pull like right. now the both poles are going right because there's people it isn't just this but there's the people who weren't swayed by the coercion who are definitely going to get swayed by the seduction and then there's mm -hmm. and then the the kind of the one two punch of that for some people is just it's going to be a lot you know um, for all of us it's going to be a lot you know without god's help we're all done but i just think it's important to remember that that's not dropped off because you know uh you know i had a i had a kind of like an exchange with a with a brother about this a couple of weeks ago and i was just talking about by like, kind of like what's being predicted you know um i think it was the who put out like what was it like six weeks ago, maybe less about like, you know, they had their um, event 2025 type of thing. I think we might have talked about it here, but um, 
you know, and this brother's like, I don't think people are going to fall for that again. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? You know, he was like, and I mean, maybe where he's at, he's thinking that people are more, you know, stout or whatever. But I'm like, from my perspective, what I'm seeing is um, there's plenty of people who never got over, you know, the, I mean, the, it's like, there's people still who, even there's that Newsweek article that came out recently about like, hey, the one that you sent where it's the close, one of the closest things to like an actual like repentant apology you've seen. Oh, right. Yeah, that was, maybe can scientists, we, got, scientists got it wrong or something like that. Can we that. talk about that for a second? Sure, because absolutely. like, that was a very interesting, and I didn't, I didn't really get a gist of what they were saying. They were saying that like, because I think that the art, the vaccines, it was basically like the the poke or whatever was like for those who knew the whole time that it was not good. Thank you for art. You should have done more to stop us from taking it. Oh, no, no, right? no. That was a parody. That was a parody. Father's, oh, okay. talking, about, father's okay. talking about the guy who wrote an opinion piece mm -hmm. where he said um, basically like science scientists got this wrong. It was really like, oh, close to no, that was a good was... article that actually. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Yeah. OK, but but he was also a, I noticed he was also a student. Mm -hmm. He was a Ph.D. student, so he mm -hmm. wasn't fully cooked in the sauce yet. You know yeah. I mean? OK, yeah. But I mean, to your to the point that you make about media in its in its release. They still put it in there. I mean, you know what exactly, I mean? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. The editorial board said, okay, yeah, this is, you know, we can put it in. I wondered about that because it's not anything huge, but there's like, there's, there was a couple shows that I saw like advertised that seemed like with the extreme politics that's being spouted by media, I guess the media I've been paying attention to, that there seems like there's a correction. I don't know. Like I was talking about this with someone the other day. I could be wrong. But like I kind of felt like the cosmic scales just like change a little bit. Like maybe it was starting to come back up on the right and the right quote unquote. But like by that I mean not just like subscribing to like hugely like quote unquote woke values. You know what I mean? It seemed like that maybe there's like a little bit of backing off from that because I, I don't know. It's like the same thing. I felt it like a couple of weeks before, like that Biden sketch came out. There's like, what is our COVID in the bathroom, like on SNL mm -hmm. or whatever, oh, yeah, that yeah, there was yeah, like yeah, this, yeah, like yeah, yeah. kind of like a little bit of shift of being like, wait a minute, like a step back and maybe not like a step back towards Christ, but like a step in like another well, other direction. I want to jump in. On, I mean, I didn't see that skit, but I was just talking with. Um... I'm just going to say you did see that skit. You talked right. about it. Yeah, it was the one where he was like, Biden was like flipping out about Spider-Man. He's like, everyone's going to get COVID from Spider-Man or whatever. You, you got to put your mask on in the bathroom. There's COVID in the bathroom. We I didn't see that. <laughs> well, you referenced it. We did talk did about I? this on this very podcast. It, like in like a couple weeks before that. Did we? Did we? We, we I really don't know. did. I don't okay. know. Right. Those busters, that, that gets some wires for right be crossed. But <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't see it. But, I mean, I, I, would, I would bet... I'll, I would bet like 10 bucks on it. I'll say that. I would bet like 10 we bucks that we have about talked quite about a, quite a number of SNL skits. I feel yeah. like I, I feel like I saw this and I feel like I do feel like, Andrew, we did talk about this. I'm we talked sure we about talked the narrative about break. No, I mean, I remember I'm, talking about the pizza one. The pizza one is great. The pizza that's one. That's the one place. I remember talking about. That's the only like SNL like thing I see besides Chappelle's like monologue, which is that really Chappelle? But Point it's being, not, it's not him. It's <laughs> point being, what yeah. I want to get at this is I, yes. I was talking, I was talking with kid sister tonight about this, and talking about you know guys who will be like, we're talking about a person in particular whose opinion kind of is is weak, you know, but the thing I want to bring up is that tendency to like she was saying like yeah, and when you call this person out on it, they'd be like I was always like I always had this position you know what I mean so that's the thing that I find interesting that's how I'm taking some of the narrative shift I'm taking that <laughs> as that guy who's like you know I'm thinking this way you know like it's it's the person who now is like oh I was always saw through the whole thing no you didn't yeah. you 
you didn't want to talk to me because you thought, you know, you thought I was a Trumper because I just didn't want to wear a mask, whatever. I, I always, you know, that the person who always, like, I always had that opinion, you know, mm-hmm. you know, the, the doubling down, it's a, it's a different way of doubling down. They had the opinion, sense. but they did, they had the opinion, but they acted opposite of that. Yeah. They, they it's, or, it's like, oh, but this is what I was thinking though. I they was just, always thinking that. They just smell which way the winds are going and they're kind of going with this it. Is, right. Well, spe- so, so there's an interesting, and I don't know if this is a signal or not, but it's uh, to this point about what is the shift. Um, let me just say this real quick. Go ahead, please. Not gonna, yeah, go ahead. I just, I just want to say this is almost like one thing to learn, right? Could to kind of keep okay. this on, right? Opinion is like opinion is not conviction. Mm-hmm. And people mm. conflate having an opinion with conviction. Oh wow! Okay. okay. Expand. So what is? Yeah. Convic- how do we measure conviction then? So what people that? get. So the thing is, is like conviction is. Yeah, I saw through this thing the whole time. Oh, yeah, me too. Okay, well, I actually lost people, was ostracized. I suffered for what I, mm-hmm. well, I didn't, you know, and I kind of recently came to it. And it's almost like a Ryan, what's that guy, Ryan Long? It's almost like a Ryan Long skit, you know? It's like, <laughs> yeah, like having the opinion that goes, you know, a lot of people will have that. And to be charitable, they're like that because they're being influenced you know, oftentimes imperceptibly by their media habits. Yes. Does yes. that make sense? So they have the opinion, but no conviction, right? So they'll be able to like, you know, I'll spend a couple minutes downloading, you know, the talking points from whatever popular media source that I like or whatever celebrity or whatever kind of like, so, you know, whatever, whatever watering hole I will get my kudos from and just parrot whatever's going on. We, we've seen that. Yes, you saw that happen with with you know the the Kufi narrative. That's just what people did. No one, I mean, really early on, no one did any research. No one really looked at anything. Like I'm thinking about all the people who the well, I'm thinking about the majority of the people that I debated with and the people who you know eventually parted ways with. It's like they didn't really look anything up. They went to whatever you know digital mag they were subscribing to whatever it's something they saw on facebook well, the science the scientists are saying this the scientists are saying this and it right. was like third it was like telephone right it was like yeah. and it's like wait did I, you talk to the scientists no yeah. i read a a news right. story about get- a government official who was uh talking about a, a paper that they read about what a scientist said it is I got to be the guy to insist that I talk for just one second. So give me one second. But there's this really excellent, maybe we can link it in the show notes or something like that. But there's this really excellent uh, like bit from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia where they break this down. But basically, I forget what the premise of the episode is because I haven't seen the episode in so long. But I watch this bit so often that it's like faith versus science. And one of the characters on the show that's traditionally Catholic um, basically breaks down about why evolution is a lie and he goes through like point by point by point of like Mm -hmm. and like why do you believe because the smartest people in the world are Mm -hmm. telling us that this is what what this is what happened and it goes through a whole thing i'm not going to get into it because there's lots of profanity involved but it's really really well done and at the end basically he's like so you've poured through the tomes of data yourself you understand exactly how evolution works and the guy's like well no and he's like so you're taking a little bit of this on faith dare i say because the whole time he's like all you're doing is taking these words of these saints and just believing everything that they say he's like but you're doing the same thing except you're just doing it with scientists Mm -hmm. and it's just so well done and it's like that is a classic always mm -hmm. sunny like anybody who's who likes i love that show anybody who watches that show that setup right there if that's classic it's good it's, it's perfect. good <laughs> it's yeah perfect. anyway i'm done i'm zipping it sorry no, that's, go ahead. That's, yeah. good. that's good well but so that, just... that was yeah that was the key. the key was nobody i think that that was the the one of the most important things that like i saw and i tried to communicate was like no 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 one knows and what was so interesting to me was that when people would I saw it early, right? Like I would talk to people about this in like 
the people who are fully bought in, right? One of the things that they would keep saying, right? Whenever I would, if I would say something like, it's a flu, it's a bad flu, they'd be like, no, mm -hmm. it's not a flu. It's, and what they would say is, it's n like nothing we've ever seen mm -hmm. before, right? And then mm -hmm. I, and, and then after they said, it's like nothing we have ever seen before, then they would proceed to tell me all the things that they knew about it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I thought it was like nothing we've ever, it's, it's gotta be one or the other. Right. It's either well, like nothing we've ever seen before. And then we're humble. And I mean, we say we don't know anything. I mean, to that point though, it's like, I'm, I, I'm seeing people's faces right now who literally would say that. Cause I, that was my, that was my, one of my first things. I was like, you know, I, I brought this up before. I was like, it's a flu. I was like, no, it's not. And I would say, hold on, hold on. My dad was a kid during the Spanish flu. So I was, I was sharing this with a certain person, you know what I mean? I was like, so the flu to my dad was serious business. Like my dad grew up when you died with, from the flu, you know what I mean? So I was trying to be charitable, be like, it's a flu, like flu could be serious, but like, yeah, it's a flu. You know what I mean? Let's not, let's not act like whatever. And, and the thing is, is like that, that exact statement, it's not a flu. I mean, I've, I've heard that from people. I heard it from priests. Like it's not a flu. It's like, and this is, before it even like hit Kansas City. That, that, that's one of the things that always blew me away is because we were kind of late catching any, I mean, we never really had any cases anyways, but that whole thing of like, hold on, you're taking something, you're saying something with such authority. It's like, we're living in the same locality, man. Like there, there isn't some sort of like hidden, uh, you know, <laughs> there's not some town west of me where they're, they're laying in the streets you know they're, they're piling the bodies in the streets so you know i i say all that to say what i want to what i want to throw in maybe we can all kind of throw a little bit in i think the next thing too is that you know i think this is a real important lesson we're dealing with this we're dealing with spells mm. and and we're and that's and i want to really i really want to break that down because the problem is is like if you don't understand <clears throat> the both and a lot of people have struggle. Like if you don't understand both and if you don't understand really when we say spiritual as Orthodox Christians, we don't, we're not talking about the, the, the exclusively immaterial and what people often conflate with emotional and psychological. We're talking about the whole thing. When we say spiritual, we're talking about the whole thing right and the because way that the lord is at work in other. the lord is at work in the material world the and lord the is demon, at work the demons are at work absolutely and so if you don't get that if like if that isn't if you aren't working on and that's an orthodox christian perspective as opposed to the neo-gnostic perspective that the majority of christians have right the disembodied neo-gnostic perspective if you aren't working off on that if that's not like tacit for you you need to get it to where it's tacit, to where it's like, you're not having to be like, okay. And like, again, I'm sorry, what does tacit mean? Just real quick. Like automatic knowledge, you know, like, like you don't think about break gas. You just, okay. You know okay. I mean? Gotcha. You have to really get this because let me tell, let me tell you about a great saint, Saint Euanesius, the great, <laughs> uh, <laughs> who he's just this incredible, incredible saint was a shepherd. Uh, incredible ascetic, but he was a big help. I, I'm sure I've talked about him here, about him here before, but you know, one of the things he had powers over serpents, and there's a there's an account of him being bitten by a serpent, and he looks down at the serpent, brushes it off, a poisonous serpent. Looks at the serpent, brushes it off, looks at the wound, and just looks up and just keeps moving forward. Right, that reality that's a hard thing for people to hear but like i'll give you an example there was um fairly well-known priest who wrote this hit piece saying that anyone who was like maintained the holy tradition of the eucharist were, were snake handlers they're calling he was, he was trying to really get it into the water you know i, I just have the, i just got the vibe from his from his article that he was hoping was going to catch on and that was going to be the oh, it was term be that like, they were going to call us sure, okay. snake handlers, you know, like, oh, these snake handlers who they think that, you know, they treat the Eucharist as magic and all this stuff. Like, if you don't understand this part, 
if you don't understand that, you know, I would encourage everyone to look up Alexi Krindach, who's done incredible, um, basically, you know, uh, research. He's done these, these polls with, with just hard data about the church. He's, done, he's been doing it for years. And you just look up, I mean, it, it's just data. It's just numbers. Parishes and communities that gave into, like, the more the COVID measure, the higher their mortality rate, the higher their sickness and I mean, <laughs> you know, their financials drop, like everything drops down. And then the, 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 the less someone caved into measures, like their parishes grew, not just financially, but they grew um, in numbers. They grew, I mean, in all kinds of things, some of them not even really measurable in regards of, you know, the faith of the people, they have these great, um, opinion polls about like how high are you feeling about your parish your community so I'm saying all this because most of us like probably the majority of people listening to us right like we've all learned and we need to remember this for the next round right which we're in blessings um, and curses right father blessings and curses blessings and curses that should be the name of the episode I'll just say that yeah blessings and curses and hey so father Who's more dangerous, neo Gnostics or neo Nazis? I'm just kidding. Well, they're one the same. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say they're probably about the same thing. One the same, but like this is really important to get though because you know we saw it. I mean, we definitely saw it here. Where the second someone started giving into it, started thinking about it, started getting worried about it, well, call it psychosomatic, call it what you want, but you invited that curse in. And the spell did its job on you. And you began to really allow your system spiritually, biologically to be susceptible to the influences of this thing. And, you know, the, the quote unquote viral properties of the vid were nothing more than just the kind of body by which the spirit was, was manifesting. Not the spirit, but the spirit yeah. of Christ, the evil spirit, you know, the spirit of fear, essentially. Sure. And the spirit of fear is really what has come in force and is now weak, has weakened people, you know, speaking of the church to such an incredible degree. Like that spirit of fear, which is the spirit of Antichrist, like that's really, it was the, the viral aspect of it was the agent. That's all it was. To they, but they bottled it. They bottled it. They bottled mm -hmm. it and poked it into people. And then the thing, you know, and then the studies even said, well, not nah, if you got the poke, mm -hmm. you're more likely to, to get COVID. Right. Which think about it this way. Again, the spell, the fear, mm -hmm. like the fears what led you into it and fear is contagious and fear compounds itself. That's why, you know, everyone needs to understand fear is a passion. Fear is a passion, just like lust, just like gluttony, just like avarice, just like anything. It is a passion, right? There is natural fear. There's a fear of what the fathers would call the natural passions, which guys chasing me with a hatchet. Yeah, there's some fear, you know, my life is in danger, right? But when it moves past, you know, the, the obvious and the rational, you know, self-preservation into the irrational, which was the vid, was completely irrational. Yeah. And- it's no longer opinion. You got now Newsweek, you got all these people saying like, yeah, the science is wrong, we were wrong, all this is wrong, right? The, the fruit of that is it, it moved people to introduce something into their body. And now we're seeing that that was bottled fear and people are receiving the fruit of it, right? So it's a spell, right? It was a spell. And the more that you opened yourself up to it, spiritually, psychologically, the more that you were susceptible to it on the biological level. Because one of the adjectives that always comes with fear is icy, right? Like there's the icy fear. Mm -hmm. So like, I mean, I don't know when it, when it was irrational for me, fear always felt like icy and cold. And like, I don't think that's from God personally. And I'm not talking about well, like, well, let's talk about this. One of the low level phenomena that you can experience, a lot of people may have or may not is um, you're in a house, you walk into a room or you're in a room and all of a sudden you will feel 
something internally i'm like i'm frightened the creeps. something's here the creeps the creeps you get the creeps and then many people have had this experience then you actually begin to feel a physical cold yeah. like the room yeah will, yeah the room will go cold oftentimes when there's heavy demonic presence there will be a physical cold yeah like, like a, one room will be significantly can be in a house that's infected you can get areas where there's a significant temperature change yeah because of those things so like that ice that like that's one of those things where there's there's a nugget there that's that's true you know well, can we in terms of a heuristic i want to go back to this idea of natural passions because you said something there that i think i want to see if this is potentially a good heuristic because it, it clicks something off to me like and it seems to apply to all the passions not just fear but the sort of rational passions and tell me if i'm on the right path here father like if we're talking about it rationally what we're sort of dealing with is like and it, there's an immediacy to it there's something right there immediate but the irrational is like we it's in our imagination it's imaginary mm -hmm. we're riling ourselves up it's ideation right so mm -hmm. i'm even thinking about like I'm thinking about it relating to the other passions, right? So it's like, you know, a natural passion, lust, whatever a situation you're with your wife, there it is. Like, this is what, mm -hmm. and in that, in that context, mm -hmm. in the context of marriage, like it's supposed to be there, mm -hmm. but it's a whole other thing to just decide that you're going to sit around and have whatever kind of lustful thoughts that you're going to have. Mm -hmm. That's then going to move you toward the more you do that, the more you're habituating yourself to move towards some act. Mm -hmm right? Or that's the same could go for gluttony, the same could go sure. for avarice, right? Sitting around right. thinking about, oh, I want to, uh, Andrew Tate's Bugatti, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like sitting around yeah. with that, as opposed to like, oh, here's something immediate, an opportunity of abundance, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let me acquire this because there will be famine, mm -hmm. right? At another time and like, okay, this is a good opportunity for me to acquire this as opposed to being like, let me just sit and think about getting rich all day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like wisdom, right? Versus impulse, you know? Like that movement, that capitalization, that impulse, um, this is one of the things that really characterize the passions in this sense, not, not the natural passions, but these unnatural, irrational passions, you know? And it's important that we understand this too, because when we're talking about rational, we're not talking about rational in the strictly philosophical sense of like how we usually think of rational, you know? Um, because- Like logical or something. Like, like logical, that. which that's contingent upon, I mean, to be frank, that's contingent upon worldly perspectives yes. and, and, the, and the pride of man. But what we mean by rational, we mean right seeing. So a man who's a man who person whose news is being developed and healed is a rational person. Right. So the rational faculty is the news is, is the is, you know, what the the news translated is into like I the heart the mind, you know, but it's not the brain, right? And so when people think rational, they think the brain. I'm not talking about the brain because the brain is really what got a lot of people in trouble with the fear actually. Yes. Because they didn't realize it was a spell because they didn't realize that when we're talking about the spiritual thing of it, like, oh my gosh, you're exactly like why I left Protestantism or why, it, because you think everything's the devil and you think everything's spiritual, but some things are just science and blah, blah, blah. It's like, er, right yeah. there, right there. And you're pushed into this either or dichotomy when it's both and thing inter interpenetrating like, right? So this is really key because I just want to throw this out now because it might get lost. You would like, I'm going to use the term, but it's the best term to use. People have to be, if you don't know what your noose is, you need to, you need to understand it. And for those of you who do, you've got to tend to your noose. You've got to, because that's how you're healed. And that's how, this is the kind of rubber meeting the road of our faith in Christ, because faith in Christ leads you to the right actions, which will be the purification of that faculty the eye of your heart so that you can see God. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God, right? So 
on the one hand, I want to say to everyone, you know, maybe part of our work here is to help people just kind of like see some things, you know, because I don't think it's really for everyone to just sit and try to figure out all the traps. But what it is for everyone to do is to keep their eye on Christ mm. and really keep their eye on Christ, right? What I mean by eye, I mean the noose. Keep their eye on Christ because that's the only way that you're going to discern anything now. Now well, and you'll get a and you'll get a sense, a visceral sense that like, oh, this is not of God right yeah. here. Like what yeah. this is. And I think that that was that was the key, Father. That even you know, I wasn't Orthodox at the time, but I you know, I was moving toward Christ, and it was and my feeling with the stuff that was beginning to happen was like, you know, this isn't on that path. Like the things that people, it's like mm, this isn't on that path at all, and so I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. And, and, and then, that was that, that was what I saw was that people who had no orientation for many of them, it gave them an orientation yeah. like it became their God. Like, you know, let's just throw something else out there, too. You got to have to sacrifice something. So, uh, you know, just a real low level to help people figure some stuff out. That thing where you're like, do I really got to give it up? As soon as you ask that that's your sign that you have to the second you're like do i really got to give that up yes the, the the second you feel that yep there you go that that's that's your first kind of baby step into this right because if you don't do that what happens is it becomes easier and easier to just flip on whatever and it's like that again getting back to what we were talking earlier about that grammy clip people will watch that and be like, oh, ha, ha, ha. Look at the chicks in the devil's suit. And, the, and was that The weekend? Is that who that was? No, it's Sam Smith. And the song is called Unholy. Golly. Man. Like, it's just yeah. so, it's, it's like. <laughs> and it's a hit. It's, a, it's the number one song. What are people, I mean, I'm just waiting for the one of just like, worship Satan and hate Jesus. Like, what's that song going to come I, out? Yeah, I, I don't know how much closer we, like, how much more blatant it needs to be. Brought to you by Pfizer at the end. Brought to like, you by Pfizer. With, with the hell lava in the background and then, boop, brought to you by Pfizer. I mean, I mean, yeah, that was, like, that looked like a Dan Seagrave, like, <laughs> like background in the background. It looked like some kind of, like, uh, it was very That's, like, it's crazy. Real. That looked, that, I was like, is this a Babylon B parody? Nope. Was, I couldn't it was believe real. it. It was real. Yeah. I don't know where you found that, but I was like, wow. Like the this Grammys, is... this little known thing called it was, the Grammys. It was the Grammys. It was, it was the ad for, and here's what's, here's what's interesting. Then um, actually it was Mark Claire. He, he posted up on his Twitter. He posted a montage of the like news responding to the fact that several like conservative politicians, I think Ted Cruz, Marjorie Taylor Greene, some other people were like, um this is promoting devil worship and they were like mocking the headlines were like mocking them as though like these ridiculous people saying yeah. that sam smith's grammy performance was was promoting worshiping the devil and it's like wait a minute the the it was literally simulating the worship of the devil because sam smith is playing the devil the people are worshiping him and at the end, the crowd erupts into rancorous applause. And it's like, is it really so irrational to be like, um, you're just promoting a, a worship a worship of the devil there? Like, if it was a if it was a priest with a cross behind him, mm -hmm. yeah. and there was a whole bunch of people singing and and worshiping, people would be like. Why are you, why are you promoting uh, Christianity? Yeah. Why are you promoting religion here? But yeah. if we get the devil and yeah. everybody's worshiping the devil and then everybody's going crazy, then oh far be it for us to say that this is promoting the worship. <laughs> yep. Yep. And here and so here's the other thing. That vainglory. We've talked about this before, right? Cuz this is the the kind of tutorial like what are the things we need to take in? I'd say the next one is vainglory. I'd say the next one is the, is when we, like, if you are still worried about what people are going to say about you, if you're scared about looking like a fundamentalist or you're scared about whatever, you got to get over that because 
that right there. And, th and this is particular for a lot of ortho folk because a lot of ortho folk, they come in really riding on the magic carpet of intellectualism. And so there's that desire to maintain that those airs and not want to look like a fundamentalist and not want to look like some sort of, you know, superstitious, religious freak, whatever. We want orthodoxy to look very sophisticated, we want them to look very erudite and all that stuff. And, you know, you can keep your, you know, you can keep your academics, I'll take Elder Cleopa, you know, For like real. I- For real. I mean, we just commemorated St. Xenia. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's That's like right. you know, right. Fool for it, do, it, do, it doesn't get any more unsophisticated. That's right, or Saint, or holy, or That's holy. Right. Saint Paisios, right. I mean, had like a fourth Saint grade Paisios, education, same. and like at the end, judges, politicians, lawyers, doctors are coming to him and asking him for advice. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a fair amount of people I I talk with, and I I always struggle the hardest with people. Most of the time I get at my work, most of the time I get people who are coming from corrections, who are coming from the streets. They're so much easier to talk to than the people who have, were like working at Cerner, which the local good company to work for, working for Hallmark, whatever. And they just went off the deep end with their drinking or whatever, whatever drug, because then getting them in, you can't tell them nothing. You just cannot tell them anything. You can't say like, no, this is a demon. This is a demon that's following you around. It's a black shadowy figure that's poking its like finger into your head to screw around your brain chemistry to get you to see things and experience things differently and, and encourage you in yourself, like um, your self-centeredness. It's encouraging you to, and they just won't hear it. They won't hear it. It's a, it's a clever metaphor for the evil inside all of us. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, sure. Good luck. Good luck. Even if you stay sober, which you might, it, you will be, it's very vapid. It'll be very, very vapid, and uh, the crows will come and get you eventually. So, well, it'll change in form, right? And I think that goes to this idea of talking about like being able to understand AI as a demon as well, right? Is that it's like <laughs> the it's just it's it's the same spirit, but it's just going to change in form according to time, place, and person. But it wants to do however it can get you whatever substance that could be, whatever idea that could be, whatever content that could be, whatever ideology that could be, whatever technology that could be, it's just going to change in form. Mm -hmm. But underlying it, it's like to, to, to not see that, you know, the- That's why you got to know yourself. And that's why you got to understand that what we're talking about has never been about ideology because ideology is just going to be another aspect of passion for you. Orthodoxy is not an ideology. It is not a philosophy. And it's just, it's not. Um, it, There's a lot of people that need to hear that, Father. So I think that is, this, this needs to be reiterated because there's a lot of new people coming in. I think coming in with the best of intentions. Um, and I think, I, I, it's not I think, I see them really struggling with, and maybe we, maybe that's what we need to talk about maybe you could expand on it is like, I see them struggling to understand what orthodoxy is. And I know that that's yeah. really what we do, what we're doing yeah. here. Like yeah. they can't under, if they're struggling to understand it outside of a vein of an ideology, yeah. a political philosophy, a moral a system, loss, a moral system. Yeah. They, they, yeah. they are, they're like, Whoa, I can't, yeah. I need a box to put yeah. it in. I let, shall... me, let me let me step back let me just kind of like one second i'm i gotta my son's awake uh go keep going guys i'll be back so, i'll be back go ahead orthodoxy is first and foremost um in this context which is why i i, I said it that way because um when you were saying it'll the demon will sh will shape you know shape shift change form whatever um the key component and the common denominator there is you, your inclinations, your passions, whatever, right? And it's just like you're saying on, on that in that Mark Claire interview, like, do you like getting riled up? Lots of people like getting riled up from 2016 to 2020. You know, I hate Trump. I hate the wokes. Like whatever it's going to be, you like it. And so if you like getting upset, if you like the energy, because there's demonic energy, 
there's unholy energy and then there's there's the grace of god right there's a demonic energy and there's you know godly energy grace right and people will feed off the energy of anger and they and the and the demons know that and so they'll give you that right and so if you are defined by what you're against instead of what and who you're for no problem right you want to get, you know, you want to get on the right side. You want to get quote unquote righteous. No problem. Let's, let's have you be outraged all the time. Okay. So what is, what is orthodoxy? Orthodoxy is primarily the means of which a human being is saved. What is salvation? Salvation is the joining of the individual, the, of the human person with the divine grace and love of the holy trinity through becoming a member of the body of jesus christ who is the second person of the holy trinity the incarnate logos the wisdom of god who for through and by all things are made and orthodoxy is the primary means by which a human person is healed of the illness of soul body and therefore mind right which Excuse is me, a soul real, mind and therefore body Excuse me, soul mind and therefore body right which is a real illness which is a it real is a real illness. illness it's not like some metaphor for something. no no it's not a metaphor so in, in the orthodox church sin is best understood and i say best because i don't want to say exclusively but sin is best understood as disease as opposed to moral infraction Right. And so once you begin to understand this, then you can begin to understand that what the church provides is a therapeutic method by which human beings are now healed of the primary ailment that affects all of us, which is the darkening of the eye of our heart or our noose, the inner, the inner core of, of what we're supposed to be. The thing that keeps us from really walking in the fullness of the image of God, but even attaining the likeness of God, right? And so we have these things called passions, which are habitual, which are wounds, if you want to see them this way. They're habitual emotive movements that will bring, will be the manifestation of disorder within the person. And this isn't just psychology. It also affects people's, affects the whole person. Right, because orthodoxy deals with the whole person, not just with the mind, not just with the soul, not just the body, the whole person. So the process of being purified of our passions, which are disordered movements of the soul, bring about a right alignment with God, who was the source of all things good. And that's that being in alignment now brings alignment and integration with us. So instead of your heart and your mind being disordered, which looks like, I you know I should love my wife, but I keep cheating on her by looking at porn every other day. And, you know, like that's, that's disorder. Your heart doesn't want to do that, but your mind and your flesh keep you entrenched in this addiction, right? That's healed through the therapeutic method of the church, right? Through repentance, and through that repentance, you're now opened up to the grace, which is the energy of God. Those energies of God through the sacraments and through the life of the church then begin to bring you through therapeutic processes, which return you to the original intention of what God had for mankind. That's why it's called salvation. You can't redeem or save something that is inherently bad, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. this is what orthodoxy is. Orthodoxy is not about being a conservative. Mm -hmm. We're not conservatives. We're traditionalists. What's the difference? I'll give you the difference. It can be a conservative teaching for someone to say, hey, well, you know, I, I got brought into the church and my grandfather is this pious, you know, Greek guy and they only took communion three times a year. Okay. 
that's nice, but that's not the tradition of the church. That's conservatism, right? Because that's what they, that's what they inherited. And this is important, this point I'm making, because the tradition of the church is actually, in that context, not um, casual communion, but frequent communion for the healing of soul and body, which is supposing, is, which is presupposing the ascetic life, a life mm. of confession, mm. fasting, prayer, obedience, right? That is the presupposition by which you are an Orthodox Christian, right? And so what's happened is people have confused what is our traditional perspective and, be, and state with a conservatism, right? Mm -hmm. But we're not conservative, we're traditionalists, right? And so we hold to the tradition that brings life. We hold to the tradition that points us to Jesus Christ. We hold to the tradition that heals us of these things that have wounded man. And this is why this is important. It doesn't matter what age you're in. It doesn't matter what time. It's in the now. It's in, in the, the now. now. Right, right. That, right. That's the key. And so if you're living this life as, it's, as I'm sharing it, but I'm just sharing what the fathers teach, right? If you live this life, then you live a life not in fear, but of love. You live a life of discipleship in which you become a, 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 not just a follower of Jesus Christ, but a partaker of his divine life. And in partaking of that divine life, you get discernment. But if you don't have this discernment, you can be in the church. That's another thing we learned over the last three years. Being in the church and having certain check boxes and holding a conservative position, because you know, as an Orthodox Christian, you're default conservative, but that doesn't mean you're traditional. Because we saw we saw plenty of churches and you know hierarchs and clergy go the way of the world, and not just because they were super woke, but because you know they were more concerned with looking erudite. They're more concerned with not wanting to look backwards than to really holding and, and, and confessing Jesus Christ, right? The tradition will, will not only open you up to discern that, it'll anchor you in it. So that's what you And were the tradition's about never been wrong. That's the crazy the part about it, Father. Never like it's never, this, which is the, the, the most amazing thing to me is that it's like, were you to ask before 2020, I think those same clergy that you're talking about, were you to ask them, has the tradition ever been wrong? They would say no. Has, has holy tradition ever been wrong? They'd, they'd be like, no, of course not. What are you talking about? And then it's like, well. <laughs> well, actually, and then, and then a, lot of, a lot of clergy, a lot of the academics, fourth, the a lot thing. of armchair you know, keyboard warriors got real busy to find the exceptions, to find the loopholes. The to find the thing that they can counsel. present as this is the error. And now they have egg on their face, yeah. right? Because it's like, well, but look, once again, it wasn't wrong. Right, right. The fourth yeah. ecumenical council is the, is the one that I've always heard people go to is, has the church ever made, you know, been in grievous error before? And it's like, mm. um, and it's like became tradition as I've heard certain people say like the fourth ecumenical council wasn't correct. Like it was all translation errors. Mm -hmm. Like they were basically saying the same things as the monophysites. Yeah, monophysites. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they were saying the same things, and it's just like, well, it's just patently untrue. It's just there's absolutely no way you can see that there a miracle occurred. If you want to ignore that miracle about which is the correct teaching, which is the wrong teaching, you can do that, I guess. You you have free will, but mm -hmm. like you can't act like that this was just simple translation error and now that we're more enlightened mm -hmm. and have google translate mm -hmm. we can understand like oh maybe we were saying the same things after all it's like no it's but you know what it because it, you know public repentance i understand it i had i used to have that opinion at one point in time oh me too and and when you begin to see where did that come from well that came from vainglory that came from not wanting to look backwards that came from wanting to like you know sentimentality and like not wanting to be that hard guy and not be irrational and you know not be a fanatic and all the things that that you know were told in polite society and especially as a convert you know prior to this is you know you're 
a lot of us were trying to escape, you know, the <clears throat> any type of remote association with the fundies, you know. And so, you, you, so what happens is the vainglory really clouds your mind, and then you're left open to sentimentality and emotionalism. And this is also too the same movement, but it's further down the spectrum of love is love and do yeah. this for your neighbor and all this stuff. And really at the core of all this is there was a lack of faith in God and not mm -hmm. just faith in God, like what well, brother, don't you believe? But I mean, in the sense of Daniel and the three holy youths. Yeah. Even if the Lord doesn't deliver us, we'll still worship him. Sure. That's what I mean by faith, because by the end of 20, this is my perspective. I hold to it. And it's going to be my perspective in 25 when everything gets hot again. Like, yeah, even if I do die from whatever, I would rather die worshiping God. And that's not my opinion. That's my conviction, right? I'd rather die worshiping God and holding to the truth, right? Because that's the life that he's given versus, you know, trying to hold on out of fear to this feeble, weak, <laughs> you know, uh, shell, you know, yeah. shell of the life that, that I have outside of, you know, the illumination of Christ. I mean, Prayers by the Lake by St. Nikolai, um, he talks again and again. I mean, one of my favorite aspects of that book is he just like, just rides into academia so hard. He's just like, you weaken senseless men your knowledge will be as dust before god you know like it's like it's nothing and I, that's one of the things that kind of first attracted me to him because i've i've been in school for a while and it's so it is what it is but it's just so like shallow because even the institutions that were raised to believe have the answers we can really trust in these like at, you know in my limited experience with those institutions i'm like oh none of you guys know what you're doing either you all have your opinions. You all have right. like the things that you think are these truths, but like at the end of the day, like you're just as lost, just as disorganized as the crew Everyone at the camp. Yeah. It, and that's the wonderful thing is like, Hey, we're all don't know what we're talking about. Like we all well, at, at best, they're the icing. Right. But the problem is that they've come to think of themselves as the cake. Mm. So, and, mm. and what I mean, what I mean by that is like, and see, I, for me, this is like, just, it's very obvious as a professional software developer working in like a cutting edge field, because any course that would be at even the top universities, even at MIT right now, right? Like let's say blockchain, right? Which I work at the cutting edge of that. A blockchain course at MIT is four years behind where we are right now, mm -hmm. behind the things that I'm, that I'm working on right now in my study, right? Four years behind. But that's true in every single field, mm -hmm. right? And so all they're doing in academia are descri they're describing, they're describing things, and now, not even accurately, and not, not even and accurately, not even well. Like most of the time, it's like they're 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 miseducating, right? Because they because there's no um, consequences. There's no consequences for them getting things anything wrong. There's a consequence for you not parroting the misinformation back on a test, that's your grade, <laughs> right? But yeah. there's, there's no consequence for your professor telling you something that is going to be seen to, or that is known to be wrong at the cutting edge currently, or that will seem to be, will be seen to be wrong a year from now, two years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. There's no consequences for them having taught you the wrong thing. Oh, right? yeah. There's no consequence. No, and 100%. So, and so they... They have come to to view them. They're the paint job. They're the paint job. They're the painters, mm. right? They're not the engineer. They're not the car engineers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're they're the painters, man. And the 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 few fields in academia that are because somebody's going to clickety clackety, right? And they're going to be like, no, no, no. But the heavy STEM and engineering fields. And what I will say to them is, go look at where their money comes from. Mm. It's coming from the military. Mm -hmm. go look at where it comes from it's coming from the military or it's coming from the state right and the thing is that and or it's coming from business interests which really tells you that like no at the cutting edge if they're if they're putting that money they're just hiring those people to do the thing so it's coming from business it's coming from military that's the cake 
that's the cake. So right. then, Cyprian, you bring up a really good point. I think maybe if there's anything that's going on right now, and I would say my generation, but I don't really know. I just like attributing it to millennials because I don't like millennials. But like, maybe it's that we think we're being innovative. We think there's th that we're like doing this new stuff, but it's all pastiche. It's like mm -hmm. that same thing that we talked about with culture a couple, or maybe last week or whatever. We think, but all we're doing is it's like, it's like we think we're like painting the Mona Lisa, but it's just a paint by colors. Mm -hmm. It's like they're telling us exactly what to do. And we're doing it. Oh, this is 15. So this is the yellow color. This is where we put it right here. But it's like, it's like, no, no, no. This is not a new thought. You're not creating something new. This is something that's already been done. Mm -hmm. And it's already, I'm losing it. Well, but, I had but a thought. This, no, you're right. Because this is what I've been talking about when it comes to like the movement of AI. Because what you're talking about is basically the algorithm is the manifestation of that, like the suggestion suggestion algorithm. And mm. it's like, well, I want views, right? So what's the, the virtue is in views. The virtue is in attention. No, that nobody who's doing any, who's presenting any idea that's innovative is going to get a million views. The person who gets a million views is not the person who gets a million views is actually reacting to something that some to a reaction of a reaction. <laughs> That's who's getting a million views. Yeah, okay. That's interesting because I've been I've been re I've been looking into this idea of of, of um hate views mm -hmm. of people who have like <laughs> hot yeah. hate takes or whatever. So the show yep. Velma on hbo max the show yep. them, like the critic sphere oh you're talking about the critic sphere yeah yeah and, and we've touched on this before but people man hmm this is interesting i feel like i had that the my guardian angel like pushed this thought into my head and i was like oh and then like as i started talking it started to leave so oh, you got it I'm, you got it but like th there's this idea of like you need the attention this is what we talked about a long time ago in an episode where father wasn't here where we talked about star wars and we talked about whenever someone criticizes it they use the mm -hmm. same words over and over and over again and it's this other thing that happens on youtube shorts a lot where a tiktok will climb its way over to youtube shorts and it's the same joke but just done with different people so like there's this person rubbing makeup off on their hand like it's not coming off it's not coming off and then it, the camera turns and there's a dude wearing all the makeup that's not coming off you know like they have like fake juggalo makeup on or whatever and it's not but it's like a joke that's done with like 10 different people you guys see what i'm saying so like it's like nothing new it's nothing innovative it's just attention for attention's sake not even for like pioneering or not even to like engineer a new thought i don't know i feel like this is slipping away more and more and more so so so, so what you're yes yes this is and this is why this is why I've been trying to communicate that there's a lot of people around me, right? Like in my field in particular, and people who have worked around these things, algorithms, AI, and all of that, who like, they can see that this thing is negative. They can see that what's going on, the technology that we're pushing forward is a problem. What they are having a hard time of seeing is that it's the demonic, the spiritual. But I think, Andrew, like what you're addressing is like, it's important for people to understand that what you just described is the fact that the algorithm doesn't live inside the machine. Okay. The algorithm is living oh, inside oh. of people. Oh. They're okay. carrying it between the platforms. Okay. I see what it's you're not, saying it's now. Not, Virus. It's not a bunch. Virus. It's there not a go. bunch of... This is the thing. The YouTube suggestion algorithm, the Twitter algorithm, the TikTok algorithm, the Instagram algorithm, the Facebook algorithm are Which, not different algorithms. They're we, the same. They're part of the same network. It's demons getting inside of people, manipulating yes. their value hierarchy, and then they will take it and plant it somewhere else. It's a single demon. And this is, well, it's not a single demon. Or it's many, it's, it's right, legion. Right. It's legion. And it's legion. And this is why this is super important if you haven't keyed in. So adding another thing, right? If we're like kind of getting back to like, here's your toolkit right the principalities and the powers it's not we're not talking about the civil authorities like which government you're going to revolt against 
And we're not talking about, you know, the kind of like fat winged guy flying around with a sword fighting, fighting in the sky with an angel, with, with a uh, eagle, eagle winged guy, right? It's both. <laughs> they, like, it's like they're interpenetrating each other. Because when you say the demonic, like, yeah, I guess people who are watching us, our viewers, whatever, they get it. But like, if you're new here, or you're going to pass this on to someone, like, you got to hear this. You got to understand what it, what the principalities and powers are, right? It's in, it's a both and. And this is super important because when you talk about the algorithm is living inside, it's a virus, like a virus. A mimetic virus. A mimetic yeah. virus, right? And that, it's demons, because that's another aspect of demonic is that it's vampiric and it feeds off of like the demonic is essentially banal. Banal. It's, it's essentially banal. Really? Oh yeah. What does banal mean? Oh yeah. It's essentially banal. So but what does that mean? What what does banal mean? Banal is like unoriginal, almost to the point of like being boring. Uh oh, oh okay, gotcha. Okay. I why so, do I say banal? Okay, yeah. So anyway, this is the West bleak. Coast versus Middle West. You know, you know what? I get that. I now I'm now yeah. I'm understanding. Now yeah. I'm understand. Now I'm understanding yeah. that. Okay, the wow. bleak, the bleak, the banal, and the boorish. McDonald's the food. It's McDonald's, McDonald's, food. McDonald's food. The bleak, right? That's the that is the the dolling up of the nihilism. The bleakness and the bleakness is the dolling up of, of the nihilism, right? So what is essential in our culture, which, which is being drawn more and more out, it's always been in there, but as the demonic is now forward facing and manifesting, right? Because when someone is afflicted with demons, runs possessed, they're not, and especially if it's like a perfect possession, they're not manifesting that all the time. Only someone discernment can see it. It's only in those moments when they're forced to the surface that the demon, the demons don't want to manifest. That's something it's an people NPC don't understand. Meme. It's an NPC meme. It's yeah. 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 The gray man, the gray man, the gray, the gray man. NPC the gray man. meme. That's a possessed it's person. Like that the possessed, the, the demon does not want to manifest. It doesn't want to, right? So if you understand that. That you begin to understand, like, so the bleak, the banal, and the boorish, those three things are really what's what's characterizing culture. And culture, don't just take that as like your flavor of entertainment. Take like the boorish. Donald Trump is boorish. Yeah. Donald wow. Trump. Donald Trump is boorish, right? If you understand what most people don't, so what is boorish, right? Like crude, right? Tactful, yeah. Tactful, right? And predictably so. And predictably so. You always so. know what he's going to say and next. And so watch this, Cyprian, forgive me. And predictably so. So let's go backwards. Boorish, banal. That's the banal aspect of it. Predictably so, right? And then that leads you to this bleakness, which is that kind of cynicism which is which is veiled in sophistication. It's the hopelessness. It's the nihilism, which feels so chic, you know. And I mean, forgive me, because like I'm guilty of it, whatever. Being it like kind of like having a foot in that world, but it's you know, it's it's the total caricature of the heavy rimmed glass guy who works at the coffee shop who everything sucks, and he's gonna talk to you every, all like for like four hours about the communist manifesto and everything else, and just like black pill you. And blah blah blah. And right? anything you say that that you represent as some something novel or new or maybe unheard of, the response will be, "It's always been that way." Or yep. everybody's, "Oh, yep. everybody's always known that." Yep. I mean, we've yep. known that forever. Yep. And it's not like it's not to say, "Oh, we've we've known that forever" in the way of saying, like, "Oh, yeah, the fathers had said this," mm -hmm. and yeah, you know what you're saying it really mm -hmm. relates to this thing, and like here. To actually like extend the knowledge, it's to cut it right there. It's to cut it. It's the critique. And this yeah. is, I don't want to get lost on this, but I just want to tie it a little, tie a little loop on it. This is the other end. If last week people felt 
I was, you know, I kind of admitted being guilty of it, but people felt like there's too much romanticism about punk, whatever. Let's just be really frank. This portion that you just brought up, that is the kind of like end of it outside of Christ. Yes. Is that is like the critique culture, which ends up becoming for the sake of critique. Yeah. Right? And not to find truth. And not and to find truth. Because because I guess that wasn't what was explicitly laid out was the redeeming quality of that was the disdain and the critique for me and for most of us that found our way to orthodoxy through the subculture, through punk, was this willingness to find truth by cutting through the back end of something. Yes. That, seek that, wisdom, find Christ. Seek wisdom, find Christ. So I just kind of want to put that little, you know, just like hang that there. But the bleak, the banal, and the boorish, this is characteristics of, of the demonic. And that banal piece of it, it's fundamental because, you know, we've all heard it before, but like, if you really break it down, you know, the demons, not only do they, not only do they lack the ability to truly create in the sense of how we would understand create in the light of Christ, but they're more interested in perverting anyways. It's, it's, it's more ideal to pervert than it is to create something new. So when we're looking at putting six things, fingers on human whoa. beings in the, uh, in the AI, yeah. it, the AI image generation, it's almost become cliche that it's like, Oh, well, it's got six fingers and it's like, okay. Well, pause. It six forgive fingers, me. You know? Forgive me. Forgive me. Let's do this. Let, let's just do this. Okay. We need to do this. We need you to be real quick on the draw. Cyprian, go ahead and pull up that, that, uh, Kyra, uh, Christ, uh, Christ, Christ. Oh yeah. yeah. Go ahead yeah, and pull yeah, it up. Yeah, that's so. But funny. I want you to do me a favor before you pull yeah. it up for everybody. Yeah. That I don't want to give it too much play because that's a powerful image in the wrong way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to just, if you can, crop it or zoom it into the to the the hands. Hand. Oh, that's I don't know. Yeah, we don't. We need to not leave it on for too long. Yeah, because I don't. Want I to I made the mistake of. um sitting with it for a few no, minutes don't too do long that. Don't and do that. it was a that was a problem don't i had do that. To, i had to go and uh and and drink yeah. some holy water so yeah don't do it it's truly an evil image it's truly okay, evil. let me uh pull um, it up but if you if you can pull that up and then also pull up the um whatever crypto chat whatever that thing is um that did the house party oh that then, one's crazy yeah, and then the, the girl's party. hand right or you can find whatever yep. if you if you can do that what well, we can just see real quick what i mean by by okay this. so let me i'll pull up the first one uh here i'll just i mean i'll just i can just leave it you know i can leave it on the screen like this i think it will be good enough um i think we can get at it i'll so do you want you want me to show the whole we won't stay on it for too long you won't I'll stay just, on it too long but I'll maybe just, we'll just uh, real quick they can see it and then they can they can zoom in on the other thing, okay. you know. So, okay. So this was just this guy who said, uh, who wants to join me in forking the Judeo-Christian base to form a new secular religion that reinterprets the second coming of Christ as the advent of artificial superintelligence, the singularity, Christ plus AI equals Christ. And then he did a AI-generated icon, and these are the hands. It's bad. Mercy. It's bad. That's all bad. It's, that's just not good. Right. I think people got it. They got the idea. He did more, by the way. He did a perversion of the Theotokos. He did Lord a bunch of... Mercy. Yeah, he did some Ugh. pretty terrible Ugh. things. So, Ugh. okay. So that's the first one. Let me pull up the house party. That one's a little more... All I'm saying is... That one's this, a little more palatable and not so blasphemous. This, this, this is faith because I just really have to be like, God... You know what you're doing. Because for me, it's just like what I've been telling people is, is like, if Putin's gonna nuke us, just do it sooner <laughs> rather than later. I'm just saying, like, just if it's gonna happen, just get it over with. So, you know, what's interesting is like it's the same thing going on. Yeah. So here's the let me see. No, we need to pray for more time. We always need to pray for more time. Uh, well, Damn and God knows I'm I'm like yeah. I don't actually want I'm not prepared to deal with a nuclear okay, holocaust. So here's the here's, here's the house event. here's the house party. Put like uh, a real cramp in my week, I can tell you that much. Here's the house party photo. 
Sorry. Yeah, those hands, man. Look, look at the hands. Six fingers. No, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fingers. And what's interesting is exact same way of doing the hands mm -hmm. as it did that icon. And it's not like the Timothy. AI doesn't know that people don't have that people have five fingers. The AI knows people have five fingers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if believe me, if it knows that, and it's and another thing, too many teeth, too many teeth, yeah. Yeah. too many teeth, and it's just like, yep. Well, well, let's think about also too what hands and fingers represent. So remember, you know, for those of you who already know, um, shout out to Sebastian, but you know the um, you know getting to the patristic interpretation of Revelation with the mark of the beast. St. Andrew Caesarea, you know, uh, the mark of the beast in the hand and the forehead, right? Mm. Like, let us understand the works of the beast and the thoughts and the mindset of the beast, mm. right? So instead of, you know, and, I, and again, I would say I'm in the camp of both and, right? Because that's, that's the spiritual, it's the both and, right? But primarily understanding the works of the beast the thoughts of the beast, the marking in the hand and in the forehead. Now, follow me on this. Hands represent action, work, you know what I mean? Um, manifestation, right? It's like the head, the heart, the hands. These are the means by which you enter in and experience the world. Spiritually, like, like spiritually meaning the whole thing, not just the invisible aspects, but the visible aspects, both, right? What is the whole thing about the singularity? What is the whole thing about transhumanism, right? Transcending the human limitations. So what is the big problem with what we're dealing with? Well, according to, you know, the false prophet, uh, Mr. Musk, the big problem is, it is a, it's an interface problem. We're limited by how fast we can type, how fast we can speak voice to text, right? And this is the whole thing why Neuralink and everything's so important because you need to bypass those human limitations of interface, right? And so the AI, wow. the demonic hand, the multiple fingers are a manifestation and a symbol of this transcendence of efficiency. It's a symbol of moving past the human limitations wow. and moving into this demonic, false utopian you know, this, this, it's this, this anti-theosis, right? Uniting for the sake of being able to produce more, do more, be quicker, faster. The two, oh. the too many, the too many fingers is not a mistake. It's not a mistake. It's a manifestation. It's a manifestation. It's on purpose. The AI purpose. is doing it on purpose. It's a purpose. It's a tell. It's a tell. Whoa. It's a tell. It's yeah, a because and the I devils, got... the devils always have a tell. That that's that's the big thing. Like as a spiritual father, I say this all the time, especially to the nuns. It's like my most frustrating thing is that the devils always leave a tell. So for instance, the second you're irritated, irritation is not from Christ. Yeah. It's not, it's not. If something is wrong. I want, I'm being very precise here for a reason. The fathers are clear that God has given us anger to fight against the devils, to fight against our sin and our passions. But irritation is not the same thing as anger. Irritation has everything to do with me being inconvenienced, me being cut off from some, my desire, right? Sure. My repetitive faculty is off and disordered. And it's not desiring the things of God. It's desiring something based on the self. Are you following me? Okay. So here's the thing. When you understand that, then you can begin to understand how things like inefficiency and all those things begin to be a tell. How irritation begins to become a tell by which, oh, this movement is actually demonic. I'm being tempted. I'm falling mm. into temptation here. Right. But what happens is we think that we are justified. No, she did this. No, he did that. I'm tired of them doing this. And so what happens is the second you engage it like that, you're no longer discerning things spiritually, right? According to 
the teachings and the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are discerning it according to your appetites and the weakness of your flesh and your mind, right? And your ego. So this is, forgive me, but I think this is one of the things that we get lost on is there's always a tell. There isn't, if possible, even the elect would be deceived. But no one's going to be like, oh, like there isn't, the Lord isn't going to let anyone be deceived in the sense of, man, that really sucks. You know, I mean, yeah, the devil played a good one. People get deceived because their hearts were hardened like Israel. God gives them over to a reprobate mind. God gives them over to a strong delusion because they've already demonstrated an unwillingness to follow him into the light and into the healing, and into the love. You see what I'm saying? Sure. So it's a tell. The devil they've always... actively, they've actively mm -hmm. pushed away. Yeah. Father, Father, you saying this about the irritation. Oof, this, it, this uncovered, this just uncovered something for me. But I remember when I was in the throes of it, like when I was at my height of pride, pride and vainglory years into the life that I was living and everything around me was just feeding it, feeding it, feeding it. I remember one of the one of the things that was a through line of my life was this idea that people were wasting my time. Mm -hmm. Like I used mm -hmm. to get. And the thing was, it was like this. Mm -hmm. People were wasting my time, but I was somebody who basically I had no responsibilities during 90% mm -hmm. of my day. Mm -hmm. I could go and do whatever I wanted mm -hmm. <laughs> at any time. And yet I would have a visceral reaction mm -hmm. to someone who didn't like it was like if they didn't treat me like the star that i was then they were wasting my time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and watch this everyone That's is now crazy. infected with that because everyone go ahead and put your hand to your right to your left right or whatever you're watching us on and how many times have you as your kid your wife your husband, someone said, hey, da, da, da. And the irritation comes in. You're taking my time. You're wasting, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? And so this is what has been brought to us. And so I would just say, we need to, you need to learn. That's to a big one, Father. I think this might be the biggest one. This might be the most visceral, mm -hmm. immediate one. You want to you let, let me take an action on this one. Yeah, let me, this is this is funny. I'll tell you a story. Papadia would would back me up if she was if she was on here. She'd back me up. This is a little behind the scenes. It's whatever. Who knows? Who knows what this will generate? So, right before everything happened, I can't. It, it has to be two thousand end of two thousand eighteen, beginning of nineteen, right? Because 2018, I did that talk on the principalities that I had sent, right? So 2018, I did that talk on the principalities. And I was getting ready to move on something. And what I was getting ready to move on was I had a, such a strong conviction. I told Bapati, I said, I've got to hit this thing with the phones. I've got to hit it. And I remember, I remember just like, approaching it like seriously and feeling like intimidation be like ooh, i don't you know what i mean and i remember talking with the brother he was just like man i don't know father i, I think you'll get a lot of, and he was right he was right i mean especially if i had tried to tackle it then now yeah, i can then, now yeah, i can yeah, talk yeah. about it a little more but at the time it was like and, and what am i getting at here's what i'm getting at i knew then this is a, like this the spirit behind this the spirit behind it and it's powerful and it's infected all of us. And if you think that you aren't infected by it, then like, good luck. I mean, it's infected all of us. Monks on Athos have phones. So real important to understand this because um, I think you had put this out already. I just read it the other day, I can't remember, but singularity has already happened. It's already happened. Absolutely. It's clearly, it's clearly, it's already happened. The speed with which happened. things are happening. Are we're already, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're already, already, we're already cyborgs, you know? And so 
in that sense, you could say like, man, you know, many of us, I mean, like on the one level that initial temptation of the, of the mark of the beast, you know, may God help us all if we haven't begun to be primed for it. What, what right? would you say? Are there any, is there, you guys have any thoughts on, do you know the very first thing that was sent by telegraph, the message, mm. what hath God wrought? Mm. I don't know. Maybe that's something because I mean, telegraph is definitely a precursor to the phone. And then that's 100%. from, yeah, that's, I mean, that's from numbers father. Well, so. yeah, I mean, yes. And I would just say this, there's a, Father Josiah Trin has been doing, he does this series like Tech Tuesdays, whatever. Very good. I suggest people watch it. He did a little thing on like, you know, and it's really good in the sense of the one, like the few that I've seen, one in particular he did on writing, you know, in books and like what that technology has done to us and even getting into like some historical commentary on like, eh, it's not as great as you think it is, you know? Um, and this gets into the whole, um, uh, bringer fire prometheus you know and like um I mean, I mean this gets us into um enoch you know and what the fall ones bring us but i want to bring it back around because everything that we're doing here the fact that um we obviously out of conviction and hope as opposed to the bleakness try to just share out of conviction and out of God's grace, what what we are experiencing, what we've seen, right? We're we're doing that in, in hoping of encouraging and helping, you know, those who are in the body of Christ who want to be in the body of Christ, right? But like at the end of the day, we have to recognize that, you know, we got to use the means necessary to to fight against the bleakness, because. You know, we talked about the boards, talked about the banal, but like that bleak aspect, it's really important that we fight against it because that's, you know, the worst passion to fall into is despair. And one of the fruits of the digital medium is its propensity to cultivate despair in people, isolation, despair, and if we can just give a little bit of a pushback on that, may God help us and may God bless the work because that portion of dealing with the bleak is just as important it, from my perspective, because it, it is the anti-venom to what's being pushed on us. And we need to really kind of like carry that forward in our, in our lives, you know? And we that's part of the hope. It isn't so much about thinking about Oh, how bad of a mommy I was because I was on my phone. Okay, that's great. But instead of just like being yourself about that, start looking at the hope of being with your child, the hope of being able mm -hmm. to implant in your child, you know, wonderful memories and prayer. Because I will tell you, you know, from experience, not my own experience, obviously, but watching and being with people as they die, no one is thinking about those things that they were, you know, irritated about. They're all, they are always thinking about, I, you know, why didn't I spend more time with so-and-so? Why didn't I, you know what I mean? Why didn't I pray more? That's what people are thinking about. And if we can keep that in our minds in a hopeful sense, like, you know what? It doesn't matter. The work emails, they can wait. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to spend time with my kid right now. I'm just telling you, you're, you're never going to regret that. On that note, Father, when it comes to, I, I mean, crucial to this discussion, because this was happening in, in uh, you know, one of my private groups even this morning, is, um, and it goes to this, uh, this what you're saying is, is really hitting home for me, and I see where I could be doing so much better with the people that I'm around of, like, sharing, because I'm hopeful, right? But I'm realizing that, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm taking some of that for granted. So for instance, I'll, I'll give you the, the e e exact, like, cause it's concrete this morning, at least my time, I guess, evening mainland time, 
uh, there was a discussion in one of the private groups that I'm in. It was related to AI. And it got to the discussion of basically the fact of people coming to the acceptance that like, a lot of jobs are going to be gone and entire industries are going to be taken over by this technology. That's becoming blatantly clear now. And, you know, I was communicating, you know, this is going to happen really fast. I, that was one of the things that I wanted to communicate was like, this is going to happen really fast. But what I'm realizing is that like, that's a, that can be a bleak outlook if it's not also combined with the idea that like, hey, really what it's showing you is like, maybe some of what you thought was valuable in what you were doing yeah. wasn't really all that valuable mm -hmm. in the yeah. first place. Mm -hmm. Like there are all of these things that the AI mm -hmm. will never be able to do. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Those are the valuable things mm -hmm. that you can be spending more time doing now, mm -hmm. now that the veil has been lifted. Like mm -hmm. the AI is a blessing in some ways that it Man, does that because it's going to lift the veil from people of what's really important. Listen, because my next one on our list was 2020 was a blessing. 2020 was a blessing. I think most of us have come to that place now, like, wouldn't change it for anything. Grateful yeah. for it. Grateful for 100 it. 100%. Grateful for it. Grateful for it. And that's, that's the perspective of those who are in Christ. What I have found, those of us who are in Christ... That's that's one of my kind of like, you know, that's that's our secret handshake. You know what I mean? It's like, oh man, what a blessing. It's like, okay, you're one of us. You know what I mean? Like, like that's you're in imagine. if you are saying it was a blessing, you're in Christ. You get it. I can't you imagine mean? where my faith would be at. Uh, like lukewarm as all I wouldn't get be out. orthodox. I wouldn't be orthodox. That first Pascha afterwards, when I was, and I'm repenting of this, but that first Pascha afterwards, I was like, it's so nice. I didn't have to go to a midnight service. Like, it was so nice that I didn't have to get up and be uncomfortable for a little while and deal with a little kid in service. And now it's like, now that makes me want to cry. Now I'm like, man, my daughter did not get to go to her second Pascha. Yeah. Like, we got her dress and everything and got all like, and we all were like, sat around the next day and had brunch or whatever it was but it was ultra let's lame. be clear there's people who are still prefer it that way yeah they still prefer doing the thing they they think that they can participate truly in the liturgy like through through the video you know what i'm saying so like that moment of being the apocalypse happening the yeah. uncovering best thing glory to god glory to god glory to god so <clears throat> i think that this is kind of a wrap-up discussion but it's not because i think there's a fair amount of meat here and father i've been wanting to ask you about this for a little bit and if there's not more meat then i have another follow-up question after that how do you feel about praying for sports teams father like because i think that actually kind of unveils something about yourself like if you and like in a respectful way, if it's your will, grant them guidance, grant them like strength and agility and ability. I'll tell you this one. I'll tell you this one. I yeah. Here here here's the here's the real path for me on that. I have prayed for individual competitors, but not for their victory. Okay. I, I I've prayed that. Yes, that they would get victory, but that it would not be, I don't care about whether they win or not, but that it's one step and one means by which they will bow their knee to Christ. So in okay. that sense, that's different, but it's not because like, he's my favorite fighter. I want him to win. It's like, <clears throat> no, I want this person, you know, to be, I want the revelation of Christ to be given to them through the thing that is, you know, dominating their lives but pray for sports team Ugh, like no it's like i love the chiefs you know pray for them that don't do that really that's, okay that that's yeah. not praying rightly no it's not i'll say it that's I, you know i mean i'm not saying you have you know i'm like that's cool like go chiefs whatever but don't like praying for them to win like no that's not just because of your, that's no that that's 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 definitely in a category in regards of like not not asking rightly of something sure I mean, sure so i'm not saying i've ever done it 
I'm just like because I don't think I'm a friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A buddy of mine wanted to buddy know. Of mine. No, I it had occurred to me to do it because what's her name? Uh, Brady's wife, Tom Brady's wife, had done the opposite. Which? Giselle yeah, the witch. Yeah, yeah, the witch. The witch. Uh, I think Giselle we've gone on record before that we know what she's up to. Um, well, she's gone on record. Oh, I mean, it's, it is. It's like that. I reference this all the time. There's a part in Arrested Development, the show, where a guy's like trying to figure out a mystery of who burned down the the storage unit, and he just turns around and says, "Do you burn down the storage unit?" He's like, oh, most definitely. And like, end of end of mystery. Like, it's like you Google tom brady's wife and it like finishes witch and then you hit enter and she, oh yeah i'm a witch oh yeah i'm a witch. oh yeah witch witchcraft witch, well, all over the place and it's like okay so it had occurred to me to do it maybe in a moment of desperation i've crossed myself during a play or whatever but it's not like i'm not like doing an acathist for the the chief ever so uh that they grant victory and then that uh it's interesting because i think that is one of those of where your inner disposition lies like, I think if you're praying for, like, dear Lord, like, I just really would love to see the Chiefs go to the Super Bowl, like, one of those things. And I think it just kind of brings something out about you. It's um, it's an unveiling. And then I kind of wanted to ask about um, the Pledge of Allegiance. Like, what's up with that? Like, what were kind of, if you had any thoughts about the Pledge of Allegiance? Are, are orthodox allowed to say the pledge of allegiance kind of yeah, like, i mean I, yeah they're allowed to like all things are lawful but not all things are beneficial you right, know so right, i mean right you know it's one of those ones where yeah i mean um you know. i mean so, well i guess some people would ask the, the difference here then so in the liturgy are prayers for the nation, the president, mm -hmm. the armed services, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What is, where is the line or the difference? How do we discern the difference between that? Because that's obviously correct. And saying the Pledge of Allegiance, for instance. Yeah, so there's a big distinction there because remember the letter we read few weeks ago mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i mean when we pray for the president it's important to pray for just it's more important to pray for the president you hate than it is the one that you love you know um and just recognizing god's hand especially in chastisements you know um and so in that sense that's there you know in the sense that we're you know citizens of an eternal city but you know sojourners in this one um i i think the thing is is like here's the problem right which i get it whatever but i just I strongly you know this is just my opinion whatever um it's my conviction <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. you know i when i pledge allegiance this like i pledge allegiance to christ and to the holy church yes and, and and i know someone's like well no i get it like patriotism versus nationalism like i get all that and hate the healthy patriotism and loving one's country and everything and like i'm just gonna say we've talked about this at length before whatever but like there's just a unique thing being an american in that sense you know i'm, I'm grateful for being an american I'm, I'm grateful for those things whatever blah blah, blah. but we all can see where like you know are where is your room for dissension right and if you think that there's never a time i think that's part of the problem because it's all fallen it's all fallen so you know if like let, okay shout out to uh someone in the comments i can't remember who it was but they asked me to bring this up so i'm gonna bring it up right now I'm going to talk about just real quick about Ukraine and Russia, right? Okay. So full qualifications. I'm no expert. I don't know. Okay, great. I can tell you what I do know. I can tell you that um, there are movements that are in support and pro-Ukraine that are opposed to the church. Amen. Amen. And I can tell you that the Russophobic 
language and all those things and all the narratives, they're, they're lies, right? Does this mean that Russia is 100% innocent as a, as a sec, you know, as a secular country or whatever, like as a state? No, I'm not saying that, you know what I mean? Um, but I will just say when you, when you see the Western influences that have facilitated schismatic, you know, mm. puppet churches mm. and putting in schismatic, fraudulent uh, clergy and hierarchs in these schismatic churches to undermine the unity of the church, to facilitate a fratricidal war. Um, no one wants to talk about what was happening in the Donbass. No one wants to talk about all these things that were going on. So what's happening in the Ukraine, although it's complicated, although there are real people who are caught in the middle of it, you know, all that's there, yes. But the, the reality is, is that, um, you know, Zelensky, <laughs> the evil one, uh, <laughs> and, and all of the this. movements, all the movements, it's no, right, we've talked about this before. It's no coincidence that, you know, another Ryan Long skit, like the person who was filling in alphabet soup, BLM is not is also like you know the blue and the yellow, and I just I just think it's important for us to understand that um, when you see our country forcing us to want to you know go along with that, I mean, am I being pedantic maybe, but to pledge allegiance to that, you know, to pledge allegiance to an intentional, willful undermining of holy orthodoxy. No. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm having like, I mean, you well, know, I what can... does it mean to pledge allegiance, right? Then it's like, you're almost cheap for the person who's like, well, but it's just patriotism and going through the motions. Then it's like, well, then what is it when you pledge allegiance to Christ? And it, speaks it, exactly. it speaks, exactly. it speaks to me of disorder. Exactly. It speaks mm -hmm. to me of there being like a disorder of like, you're conflating Christ in America. So that's, so that's my thought, you know. It's They're like, having like raves in those churches under Zelensky. Oh my gosh! I mean, well, but that's what the Soviets did. Yeah, they turned them into sports good. clubs. They turned yep, them into nightclubs. Night clubs. Yep. Yeah, that's what. Yep. They, that's exactly what and, the Bolsheviks and it's, did. And it's demonic. It, it's. I mean, listen. When we say demonic, I mean, it can't. When we when we're talking about demonic here, I, I just I'm sure everyone, most of our people listen to us, they're on, they're on the same page, but. For those of you who are new here, you just you you may not understand when we say demonic what we mean by demonic. We mean in the most literal sense, you know, demonic. We're not talking metaphorically, we're not talking figuratively, you know, when you see these blasphemous acts that are done intentionally. Um, I mean, listen, the old gods are back. And the and hell is hell is upon the earth, um, and this is this is this is what we're dealing with, you know, and so um, it's just everyone needs to pack really light. Hmm. Everyone needs to pack really light. And well said, Father. I just think that you know words mean something, and I have a lot that I'm going to account for. I have a lot of words that I've said in my life that. Now, as an older man, I wish I'd never said, and I thank God for repentance, you know? And so part of my repentance is like, I'm choosing my words carefully here, you know? So I'm gonna say pack light because pledging allegiance to something that is not alleging itself to Christ, it's a sucker's bet. It's foolish. I agree. So I, I still, I Amen. that's, I, you know? I still don't entirely believe that Zelensky is a real person. I just an amalgamation I, of an AI. I honestly art. think that that is a really strong position to hold, considering the technology that we're talking about now that's available to the public. You got to understand that as powerful as the what I mean, what we've even shown here, as powerful as that is, and these companies definitely highly connected to the military. If you think for an instant that the that the military and the the intelligence agencies 
if you if you're able to use it for free on the web that the military and intelligence agencies don't have five versions ahead you're crazy right you're crazy Just saying ai generated turn it into a hard light like hologram like done you know that's it oh yeah. what's the most sympathetic story we can come up with oh he's a he's a gay you so did you yeah. guys see the um there's a By video, the way, an AI video of Joe Biden uh, uh, going in on it's AI generated, but the voice is exact. Uh, a, Joe Biden going in and lambasting um, trans people. Mm -mm, no, it's wild. Like I was like, yo, this is so th the voice is perfect. And it's like it's Joe Biden if he was like the most right wing person mm -hmm. that could possibly exist talking about how trans people are, trans women are so, all men and going in, so and, let in me, and in let me let me just toss this in here too right um so the demonic one of the what are some of the powers of the demonic voice throwing they can voice. they can throw voice they can imitate they appear, can appear as someone else they can appear as someone else and so instead of them needing to gather the ethers to manifest a material body they have the technology that can facilitate that. Mm -hmm. And this, I mean, that's part of the, that's part of the demonic, you know, calling card. That's part of the tell. It's their thing. It's their thing, man. It's, it's the it's thing that thing. they do. And they do. So <laughs> why can't so, people, I, but people just can't, they cannot see like, look, it's not like, it's not growing food. It's not building houses. Mm -hmm. Like, no, no, no. What's it doing? It's pretending to be. It's deception. It's pretending to be deception. some people. Deception. deception. Yeah, it's, it's deceiving. I, you. One <laughs> of my favorite stories is um, my favorite. I mean, it just illustrates a really good point. But I counseled a guy who's um, him and his wife are using meth together. Uh, mm -hmm. And he and I don't think he used whatever, but he left for work and she stayed home and used. And when he came home, um, he couldn't find her and he like walked in the kids were all watching tv and he's like where is your mom and they all pointed up and he went up to the attic and she said i could hear you with another woman up here mm -hmm. and uh he was like i've been at work she's like i could hear you and she was crawling around in the insulation looking for that Ugh. yeah like and like and like i can't tell you how many stories i've heard of people hearing their friends outside of their apartment while they're high Demons. like talking smack on them like talking crap Demons. on them like just like outright and like like i like you're hearing me now they said that they could hear people outside just talking crap on them just like i mean i'm a, i'm gonna I'm tell you right now i see it just to be very conservative i see it once a month <laughs> that's just me just you know I, oh, there it is. I want to say way, way more frequently, but like I see at least once a month where someone comes into me and they're like this, this, and this, they're upset. And whether it's a dream, mm -hmm. um, whether it's literally like looking at the window and seeing, I mean, I've seen everything like I saw you sitting with someone. I saw this person, she was talking to this person. I, I mean, I hear it at least once a month and it's just like, like, I'm telling you, the demons do this. Yeah. They do this. And now some be like, okay, okay, whatever. But here's the thing. Here's why it's not delusion. And here's why it's not just, you know, mass psychosis is that when you put this in the context of someone who's a confessing, repenting, you know, right mm. person in the right standing with the mm. church, not just mm. like, you know, going through the motions what's left well what's yeah. left is demonic yeah influence. yeah and it's it's very it's very real and we don't need to have them manifest like i said in the ethers in front of you just open up the screen and the deep fake i mean you're we're seeing and people are but people are asking for it asking there was e elon musk did a tweet today uh, you know, this this game Deus X that's like all about the artificial and it's all about the singularity and all of this, right? And he did a tweet with the like cover of that game and said, it wasn't supposed to be real. Mm. That was what he said as the caption. Mm. Beneath it is like a tech blockchain magazine. And they said, when Neuralink chatbot AI, sir, 
So like they're asking, they're like, yeah, when is there going to be the Neuralink chatbot AI, sir? I mean, it's like you just you were talking about jobs that could get replaced by AI. My job could easily get replaced by AI, like like within the next couple of years. Like they don't. Here's the thing. It can't actually. And I think that that's the most important part about all this. Like, we, you know, we were talking about like movie and, and film and all of that. And, and uh, Torba, the CEO of um, Gab AI, right? He's been going on about an AI arms race. He's insane, right? So he, he wants the demon. And he's like, don't you understand? We could make a Hollywood movie in a weekend yeah. to like to, to, to push our agenda or whatever. And it's like, yeah, but, but, you, you, but you can't. Because what you're going to get is you're actually what you're doing is you're going to get six fingered. You're going to get the six fingered AI. Now I'm going to use that. You're going to get a six fingered movie. What it's going to actually be doing is programming you. You're going to, you're going to get, and you're not going to know that it's programming you. And you're just going to push it out, push it out, push it out, push it out. And, and all the while your sixth finger is growing on your hand. Well, it's just so funny. I just love this little side note because the Nephilim, it talks about the, they had six fingers. Uh, really? yeah, yeah yeah and there's even there's even the traditions in certain um indigenous cultures um about like that these ancient ones are able to run alongside and pick up a whole buffalo mm. and like run with carrying a buffalo right these giants in the americas and stuff like that and they were known for having six fingers and the nephilim you know what I mean? there's the six fingers <laughs> so so i just it's 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 great Six fingered man and Princess Bride. That's right. It's all there. I'm just kidding. That's nothing, but it's just it's there. Um and uh oh my stupid joke took my thought out of my head, but that's all right. Whatever. Um okay. We're coming up on two hours anyway. We're coming up on two hours. And the thing I will say real quick is I don't often peruse the comments, but I did this last week. And someone did summarize what my thoughts on Batman was Batman having backup plans for take down the Justice League. The logic he uses, well, me having a gun does not create more crime. It was like, it's like, I have a gun to defend against crime. It's like, okay, well, Batman has these stances against the Justice League. That doesn't mean it creates the need for the Justice League to like, like that doesn't, now, that doesn't. Fa- now, let me, let me tell you something on, on that note. Because okay. this is something that Father Turbo sent over to me. Because I was asking him about, um, you know, a project that I had been working on that was, I, I mean, it was a, it was a gambling, a thing that could be used for gambling. And I had asked Father Turbo, I said, I'm, you know, I don't gamble, um, but I've been working on this protocol. It could be used for gambling. You know, is it something for me to keep working on and make it public? I don't know whether I would ever work on it, but it's an open protocol, right? And he sent, Father Turbo sent me um, a, 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 an article about a letter that Kalashnikov, the creator of the Kalashnikov, Kalashnikov. Had, had written to, um, I guess, the patriarch of Moscow mm-hmm. at the time. Mm-hmm. So saying that he, he was in repentance and wished that he had never created that gun for all the things that it did. And because, you know, it's the most, it's the most widely used weapon sure. of war in the world. Probably that ever had, like as a single weapon of war, it has probably killed more people than any other like single specific type of weapon ever has. Hmm. I would, I would wager. Right. Mm-hmm. And of all different kinds, I mean, from the streets of cities to, to battlefields in the jungle. Right. And he was saying that he wished that he hadn't, but I, but he never used it to kill anybody, but it was just the simple fact that like he put in the, the intention and the work to create the weapon in the first place. Hmm. could be something there no it's a thought it's a thought it could be something it could be something there i'm gonna think about it we'll have this just just this gentle debate throughout the rest of the show just like five (laughs) minutes at the end be like all right so here's why i think batman was okay here's the batman debate (laughs) um yeah um remember i was saying earlier about that the second you're like uh yeah (laughs) i i still yeah i'll drop it i'll drop it but i still i can find this for you oh here it is yes 
Uh, nice. Oh yes. Uh, keep doubling down. <laughs> yeah. Where did you get that? <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's really good. Does anyone know the story? Do you guys know the story? Yeah. Of this? Yeah. The Wait, restor- is it? The- what, tell me because I know it. It's somebody like yeah, restoration. That's it was right. a restoration that just got horribly wrong. This is your doubling down right here. Yeah. What is it supposed to be? Okay, what it was was it was this you know Renaissance painting of Christ <laughs> and some random old lady. God bless her heart. Uh, wow, Father, like, you oh, are a Missouri. She wanted to touch it up, whatever. So <laughs> at some point, in time, she starts touching it up and then she's like well obviously she's like okay l- l- let me well let me fix it more more and she just kept, kept going, doubling just down kept instead of leaving off well alone right she just got it to this and thought that this was gonna pass so Father, yeah. <laughs> you keep doubling down I your ancestral to like, obedience oh, your ancestral like missouri blood came out for a second because you're like bless her heart like <laughs> it came out so strong for one second <laughs> you just guys you just so far haven't convinced me yet i'm just saying, about the oh, really? they need to pull out the card again <laughs> haven't convinced you huh uh, keep I, doubling down. I could i could this is not my part po- well this is not the batman there's not the batman podcast so i'll just leave it there for now okay. but next time if we all are all sitting around a table together we can really uh, get into it okay um all right so uh every i haven't updated in a couple of weeks but every time we mention a song or an artist it goes in a playlist royal path uh podcast playlist on spotify um we have a store royal path dot store none of us see that proceeds it goes uh two-thirds of the proceeds go to our uh local parish saint mary's and then the other third goes to the person who creates um i'm going to start plugging this nobody feel any pressure to whatsoever but if you're looking for a reason to um for somewhere to offload some money you know as a penance or whatever uh through the our uh, Parish St. Mary's, we have a Mount Tabor School, Mount Tabor School for um, Liberal Arts. Uh, I will have a link on how to donate to that if you in the description. Wish as much. In the description. Every uh, every week in the description. One, yep. Yeah, we, we asked you guys before and you absolutely came through. If this is something that, you know, priest gives a penance or something like that, this is an absolutely awesome place. We talked about, um, uh, you know, building an ark. And this is definitely a huge cornerstone of the arc. Um, uh, beyond that, if you need to address, if you need to write us a letter, an email, uh, Andrew pa- <laughs> Andrew Path, Andrew at RoyalPath.network. That is the email that you can send people, uh, send stuff to. I can give out Father's uh, contact information, um, so you can email him directly. Um, get in contact with him. Um, and ask any questions that you want to. Um, I'm trying to think that's everything we plug. I think that's everything that we plug. Yeah. So, um, okay. Well, thank you all. And well, thank you for having me. I want to, um, man, there's a family. Um, oh, thank you, Father. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a family who, uh, we'll put we'll put the description in the link, yeah, for their yep, GoFundMe. Yep, 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 yep. I've, um, got, the, I've got the link because I. Uh, yeah, wonderful yeah. family. We know them personally um local family here who were in a very tragic car accident um the husband paisios very pious man him and his wife zinia their five children pious people terrible car accident broke his neck and his back uh, but thanks be to god you know um he's alive and you know we have hope that god will continue to pour grace but please if you can you know so give some support to this family um this pious family that um you know, not just obviously for for their needs, but I think I think all of us who are watching it are encouraged to see the body of Christ and to see the the charity of people's hearts helping people. This is what I mean by hope. You know, mm-hmm. not just participating in it, but witnessing it is a good thing. So we'll put that um, just that uh, just uh, link in. Uh, Absolutely, thank you, Father. Good thinking, thank you, Father. Um, yes, please. They are a wonderful, beautiful little family. Um, and they, they need help. So, um, other than that, I think that is, thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.